Now, the last step, I want to spend a little time on this. Step number six is you have to learn how to tell your story. Okay, we've had a lot of questions over the last couple of days about this. And I wanted to spend a little time uh, going into story and help you understand why we do it, how we do it, okay? And so um, I'm going to lead with, <clears throat> um, I want to kind of just di- draw a diagram. Those, those who are, um, are my, my ClickFunnels members, you've heard me talk about this before, but this is one of the most powerful, most important things, okay, when we tell our story. And if you understand this, you'll understand why if you've tried to sell things in the past and you've struggled or it hasn't worked, it's probably because of this, okay? So this is what happens. Um, all of us at one time in our lives, we're normal human beings. How many of you guys remember back in the time when you were normal, right? Where you're like, I was a normal kid. I remember for me, it was like, I used to wake up every day. I'd go to school. I'd come home. I'd eat Rice Krispies. I'd watch TV. And then at the end of the day, I'd have dinner and then I'd go to bed. Like that was my life. That's what most people do their entire life, okay? So my question is like, when do you, like, do you remember when it shifted for you? Like something happened in your life. There's some experience that shifted it for you, right? It could be anything. For me, it happened, it's happened multiple times in my life. I remember when, I, when the very first time I started wrestling, I remember when I had this shift and it was like, I'm going to be a wrestler. I remember when I started learning about business, I was like, oh my gosh, I had this epiphany, this aha moment. I'm like, this is, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life, okay? For you and your thing, do you guys remember when you had that shift? You know, for me, a normal person who didn't really care at all, of a sudden something like just grabbed you. It could have been anything. It could be finance, fitness, you know, it could be like what, a vision boards, like something just grabbed you and it shifted you a little bit. How many of you guys remember that? Okay, and, and do you remember that moment? Like there was this emotional thing. You had this, you had this emotional uh, thing, right? Emotion here, right? We had this emotional moment and it was amazing. And it changed our entire life. And then what happened, right? So you had this emotional moment. It gave you this big, huge, I call it an epiphany. It gave you this big, huge epiphany and it started you on this journey, okay? And this is the bridge, okay? You have this epiphany, you're like, oh my gosh, this is gonna change my life forever. And then what happens? We get excited, right? We start like, I'm going to start geeking out on this. And you start like, going deep. How many of you guys have ever gone deep on something you got excited by, right? So like you go and you buy every single book on the topic and you like devour it. Then you listen to every single podcast and you go to every single live event. And then you start studying the science and the everything. And like you just start freaking out, right? And you're going on this journey because you have this big, huge epiphany and you're having so much fun. You start geeking out and this becomes you, right? I'm going to put glasses on this person because that symbolizes them geeking out, right? You start geeking out, Right? How many of you guys have been through that process, right, with your thing? And you're like, I could tell you every single scientific reason why this thing will change your life forever, right? And so that's where most of us come into this business. We come into this world, right? Because we're so excited. We know every single fact. We have all of this logic. Excuse me, this is logic. We have all this logic that we now have as a tool to be able to convince the world that what we're trying to share with them is going to change their life, right? And this is what happens, okay? All of a sudden, we see our prospective customer. We see them coming and they start walking by and we're like, oh man, this is my shot. I'm gonna change that person's life. It's gonna be like, they don't even know what's gonna hit them. We're like, okay, here they come, here they come. You see the person coming to you and then what do you do? You pounce on them, God, you pounce on them, right? And also you start spewing out all of the logical arguments you have about why this is the greatest thing in the world. And you start spewing it on them and you start telling them, you try to convince them that your way is right. And then what happens? They're like, ah, and they run away, right? How many of you guys have experienced that with your thing? Okay, Stacy's over here laughing because she's done that before. She's like, I can save your marriage, right? Okay, all of us do that. And the reason why is we have this thing, why? Because we're going through this, we get all this logic, right? And we have what we, we call techno babble. Techno babble. My handwriting is horrible, I really apologize. Techno babble, okay? And um, one, of my, uh, one of my friends, her name's Kim Claver, she actually wrote a book. And it's called, uh, if my product's so great, how come nobody's buying it? In that book, she says, the number one killer of sales is techno babble. Okay, it's you telling the person, spewing out your logic about how you're going to change their life, right? And so what we have to understand is that this is not, like this techno babble here, that is not the reason why you started on this journey, okay? You've geeked out, you've went a thousand levels deep and you've enjoyed it, right? That's not why you got started. So we have to stop using techno babble. I've seen some of your descriptions, okay? They are spewing forth the techno babble of everything you've ever learned in your life about how you can change that person's life with your course, right? Okay, the problem is that we're trying to sell logically, yet you are not sold logically. People buy things emotionally and they justify it logically, okay? So for, if you wanna be successful at telling your story, you have to get out of this. You have to forget all this crap over here because all this is gonna do is get their eyes to glaze over and get them to run away. You have to go back on this journey, come back on this bridge, come back over here and remember back when you were just you. Remember the experience that happened that got you to shift. What was that? What was it that caused that epiphany for you? Something happened, right? And when that thing happened, then you went on this journey. 
Okay, it wasn't the other way around. You didn't find out the science behind why your thing's amazing that sent you on the journey. Okay, something happened here, something emotional. Okay, and so the story we tell people is our story, our Epiphany Bridge story, the thing that shifted us. That's how you get people to transform. That's how you get people to follow you. Okay, that's the key. That's what most people miss. Okay, so you have to become good at telling that story. Um, And you have to tell it in a way, when you tell the story, it's not in a way where I'm like, hey, let me tell you my epiphany I had. Blah, 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 blah. And funnels were the greatest thing in the world, right? Like that's, not, like that's not the goal. The goal is not for you to tell them the epiphany you had. The goal is to tell them the story you had so that they have an epiphany, okay? I'm gonna tell you guys a story about the first time I really got this. Um, how many of you guys have ever seen the TV show The Prophet with Marcus Lemonis? Okay, if you haven't, it's the greatest business show on TV. Like it's insanely good. Okay, every single week he picks a new company. He goes in there and he fixes them and he, he makes them amazing. Anyway, when we were doing our, our second live event ever, I was like, I want a keynote speaker. I can't afford Tony Robbins yet. Tony spoke at number three, but I couldn't afford Tony yet. I'm like, who can I possibly get? And, um, and I wanted Marcus Simonis. Like he's amazing. And so we luckily got him. He agreed to come speak at the event. And this is one of my secrets. I was like, I want to hang out. I did this with Tony as well. So this is like, if you want to build a relationship with the speaker, I was like, put in the speaker contract that we need 30 minutes before the event to talk and hang out to make sure he understands our audience. And, uh, and uh, he said, yes. I'm like, sweet. So before he, like, when he got to, to our event, I had 30 minutes of him in a room. And I remember he kind of walked in the, walked in our room. He saw our people jumping around. And he came back into our little meeting room with us. And he's like, what's happening? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, why are these people so excited outside? And I was like, uh, I don't know. They're excited about like funnels and stuff. He's like, I thought this was like a software convention. He's like, why is everyone so excited? And uh, I remember we sat down in the room, we started talking and he's like, okay, so tell me like, ex- for me, my thing's funnels, right? Like, tell me this funnel thing. How does it work? And I remember the very first thing I did, oh, I broke my rule. I shifted over to techno babble. I was like, all right, let me explain to you how people can increase their conversions and make more money. I started spewing techno babble at Marcus Limonis, right? And was he, he's like, oh, then why are they excited? I'm like, Duh, like, duh, duh. And all of a sudden I was like, wait, wait, wait. Oh, Russell, stop. Stop spewing techno babble. Tell him your story. And I went back and I told Marcus Lemonis my potato gun story. And how I created my very first funnel selling this. I went on the whole story. And I remember I told him the story. And I didn't say, and Marcus, that's when I had my epiphany. I needed a funnel. And every business needed a funnel. I didn't tell him that. I told him my story and I watched as he listened. And I got done with my story. He said, man, I said, Russell, every business needs a funnel. I was like, ah. He had the epiphany. We have to tell our stories in a way that they have the epiphany, the same one that we had. If they have that epiphany, they will go on this journey. They will geek out. They'll learn the techno babble on their own. We just have to give them the epiphany. That's what the goal of your story, to give them that epiphany, okay? And so the next question people ask is like, well, that's awesome, Russell. I get it, but how do I, how do I actually tell my story? And I could literally do a three-day event on storytelling. Um, we don't have three days. I got 14 minutes. So um, I'm gonna tell you guys a shorter version, but um, this is the script we use. So pull back the slides. So um, this is what I call my Epiphany Bridge script. And there's, there's deeper versions. This is one that's a little bit lighter, but this is one that we can, we can cover in the next 10 or minutes or so. Um, this is the story structure I use for all my stories, okay? And if you, look, if you start studying story, and again, I could go for days on this. Um, there's so many good books, like Hero with a Thousand Faces and, uh, and the writer's uh, journey. Anyway, most, most stories, most movies follow the same storyline, Okay, um, from the beginning of time till now in almost every culture known to man. Like it's crazy when you start understanding that. So story's not something we have to guess and just hope is gonna be good. There's a proven story structure that works, okay? And so this framework, uh, my story framework, this is my story framework, this is how I tell my stories, okay? So I'm gonna walk you guys through it, okay? The very first thing I do when I start telling my story is the opposite of what most of you guys are gonna wanna do. The first thing that most of us want to do because we're so happy and so proud of our stuff, we wanna position ourselves and show people how great we are. So we wanna get on this big, huge pedestal and be like, I'm rich, I'm famous, my marriage is amazing. Like, you wanna talk about your good stuff. That's not where you start, okay? If you do that, it distances you from your person, okay? You have to figure out where they are. Because if this is a timeline of, of events, right? And you've, you've achieved it, you've got, the, you've got the result. You're like, yeah, I've done it, okay? You're not from the top of the mountain yelling down, hey, it's amazing up here. That's not how you do it, okay? You have to come back down and you go back to this side and you walk down the mountain and you start to where they're at and be like, hey, what's up? Um, I've gone through the same thing you went to. Let me tell you my story. And you start with your backstory, okay? You start with your backstory. Every good movie starts with a backstory. Have you guys ever noticed that? right? It always tells the story of the character. We start in, in the spot, right? And so the backstory is leading you to where you got stuck, right? That's why I have the, the picture here of the car slamming to the wall. I have this backstory where I got stuck and I couldn't get any further. And the reality is most of the people who are listening to you, that's where they're at. They're stuck as well, okay? And so you're coming back saying, I got stuck, but 
I got this really cool experience. I had to go on a journey. You guys hear my story about my journey? This is what I had a chance to do. And you start telling about this journey. Now, if you look at it again, this has come back to story structure. Every good movie, if you look at from the beginning of time till now, they always start telling the backstory of the hero, right? Okay? And they always start in place. And then the hero always leaves their physical location, right? Think about Lord of the Rings. Frodo had to leave the Shire. Okay? If you look at... Um, what other movie? Um, Cars, right? Lightning McQueen had to physically leave his location to drive to California to win the Piston Cup, right? Every movie happens. The hero has to leave. They have to go on this journey. So I tell them the backstory about how I hit this wall and then I went on this journey. Let me tell you the journey I went on, okay? And I start telling them this journey. This is what I was learning. This is what I was going through. I tell them the journey of what I was doing, where I was going, what I was trying to discover. And then this thing happened to me, okay? This thing happened to me. I had this epiphany. Okay, epiphanies come in two different ways. Either you learned it or you earned it. Okay, epiphany, if you learned it, means somebody gave you, you had a guide who's like, hey, this is this process, let me show you this thing, right? So I had a guide who I learned it from, or I earned it through my knowledge. Like I had this epiphany, I had this idea like, oh my gosh, like this is the future, right? So I had this thing, this new opportunity that was, that was presented to me that changed everything, right? And you tell the story, this is how it changed me. And then basically, I, after I had this thing, I turned it into a framework. And here's my process. Like, I, I, I figured out, here's the step-by-step process of what I need to do to be successful, and after I followed this process, this process, here's what I achieved, right? We talk about the journey of achievement. Okay, here's what, I, here's what I achieved. And then down here, though, you have the journey of transformation. There's two different journeys, okay? So for example, if you guys listened to Stacey yesterday, Stacey told you her backstory when she first got on stage, right? She talked about her and Paul, and Paul came, and like, it was all falling apart, and like, she slammed into this thing, boom, this rock. Into this, into this wall, right? And I remember I was sitting back here as she was speaking, listening, I was reading the comments that people were putting in there. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, I went through that. I'm going through that right now. I went through that last year. Oh my gosh, I see this. It's coming in my life. Like all you guys are like relating to her backstory, right? She hit this wall and she didn't know what to do. She's freaking out. And then Stacy had to go on a journey. She's like, I had to go on a journey and Paul wasn't coming with me. I had to figure this stuff out on my own. So I went out there and I started reading every book and every single course. And I was going through this and this. And she's going through all these things. And all of a sudden she had this epiphany. She started seeing as Paul transformed, as her marriage transformed, all these things. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is working, right? Part of it was epiphany. Part of it was she learned these things. And she had all these, these, these tools that she was given to her. And she's like, and it was amazing. And then it was like uh, the school bus story where she's like, I, it, you know, this is just this thing. And then she went back and said, okay, I'm going to start teaching we're going to start teaching. So what's our framework? How, does this, how, how do we get to here? Let me make a map. Let me show you how it goes. And then...